Welcome ladies and gentlemen to another CUDA worksheet tutorial. I am Mr. West and this is trigonometric ratios. Let's go ahead and get started. Now before we get into the problems, we need a little bit of background on this topic. Sine, cosine, and tangent are the trigonometric ratios. What is it talking about? Well, the first thing you need to know is we always have to have a right triangle. Let me rewind a second here. First off, that's theta. That is an angle besides the right angle given in the triangle. So we have a right triangle angle, and then we have what I call the reference angle. So that's our reference angle. That's We have to be given that each time to know what ratios we're talking about. So as we have a reference angle in the top there, we have our opposite side here. And the reason why this is the opposite side is because it's opposite this reference angle. This opposite side does not touch the reference angle. Then we have the adjacent side. The adjacent side touches the reference angle. It's adjacent to it, meaning touching it. So that is our adjacent side. Our adjacent side always forms one part, uh, one side of the angle. And then we have the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is always going to be the same because the hypotenuse is always opposite the 90 degree angle. Now our reference angle is never the 90 degree angle. Okay, it's always going to be one of the two other angles in the triangle. So we have our three trigonometric ratios here. We have our, so, our sine, uh, abbreviated SIN, cosine, cos, and tangent TAN. And basically this just compares two sides of the triangle. What's great about this is no matter what this angle is, let's say it's, um, let's say it's 30 degrees, no matter how big the sides are, how big the triangle is, as long as it has a 30 degree angle, these trigonometric ratios are going to be the same for every single uh, uh, triangle that has that same 30 degree angle. So that's pretty important because that allows us to make comparisons and find information about sides just given an angle and one additional side. So that's pretty cool. The other thing I want to note is if this reference angle changes. So let's say we move it. Okay, so let's say we move this reference angle over here. This no longer is the adjacent side. The adjacent side changes. The opposite side changes. So this would become our adjacent side. This would become our opposite side. The hypotenuse always stays the same. It's kind of like locked in. So that's the cool thing about the hypotenuse. It always stays the same. And then you just got to compare, um, make sure you remember to change the opposite and the adjacent side. One easy way, way to remember these trigonometric identities is SOHCAHTOA. This just stands for sine is opposite over a hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over a hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. And you've probably heard your teacher say that. I just wanted to reference that here. Now, with that in mind, let's go ahead and jump right into these. These are going to be quick work. So as soon as you get this, head off. Don't watch the full video. Uh, this is just a little bit of background, and now we're getting to the examples. So the first one is tangent of Z. Always, always, always identify your angle first. Okay, so that's our reference angle. Once you label your reference angle, okay, the next step is labeling our sides. So we're going to have our hypotenuse. That's always opposite of the 90 degree angle. Then we have our opposite side. That's always opposite the reference angle. And then we have our adjacent. That's always forming the angle with the hypotenuse. So let's break this down into steps just so you guys remember. So step number one, we have find reference angle. Do you remember step two? Correct. Good job. It's label the sides label sides and then step three for this just for ratios there's more steps if you're finding side lengths step three is use ratio okay so now we know that tangent of z okay well tangent of any angle is equal to opposite over adjacent okay so for this one we have tangent of z it's not tangent of just any angle by the way this is theta that usually represents angle. This is equal to our opposite, which is 21, over our adjacent, which is 28. You always want to simplify if you can. In this case, you can. I'm going to divide both by 7, and I get 3 over 4. And that's my answer. My tangent of z is equal to 3 over 4. And it's as simple as that. So three-step process. First, find a reference angle. Two, label the sides. And then three, use the ratio. I guess there's a step four. I'm sorry. I'll put it in blue just because it's like an implied. Step number four, simplify. 
I think I said that right, or reduce. All right. Moving on to uh, number two, cosine of C. So now we're looking at C, okay, and we're thinking about the cosine. So first thing, let, find my reference angle, done, opposite, adjacent, hypotenuse is always the same. So we have cosine of an angle is equal to, op, uh, false, adjacent, adjacent, ka, C-A-H, uh, uh, adjacent over hypotenuse. So cosine of C is equal to adjacent 16 over 34. Now you can reduce this one. Uh, 34 doesn't go into 8, but 2. Okay, we can divide both the top and bottom by 2. So we're going to get 8 over, what is that, 17? I believe it is. 8 over 17. And that's as simplified as it can be. So 8 over 17 is our answer for cosine of C. Let's do another, let's do a sine one. We haven't done that yet. So let's go down to number eight here. Sine, find our reference angle, sine of C. So we're looking at this guy. We need to label number two, opposite. Be careful here, the adjacent side. Again, touching the angle, but it's not the hypotenuse. Hypotenuse is opposite the 90, it's the longest side, hypotenuse. Okay, so sine of C, sorry, sine of theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, S so, SOH, opposite over hypotenuse. So then we have it's equal to sine of C is equal to opposite 14 over hypotenuse 50. 14 up, I got to reduce that thing, divided by 2. I think that's the biggest I can divide by, and I get 7 over 25. That's my final answer. Okay, so just real simple here. I'll even do another bonus one real fast. Okay, Z opposite, adjacent, hypotenuse, cosine is 24 over 30, adjacent over hypotenuse, and divide both by uh, 2, I get 12 over 15, nope, I can divide by 6, can I? Shame on me, 4 over 5, so 4 over 5, because I divide both top and bottom by 6, cosine Z equals 4 over 5. Okay, now, what is it talking about with this one? Find the value of each trigonometric ratio to the nearest 10,000th. Ooh, 10,000th. Wow, really? Okay, so just a quick clarification. If we have the number like 2.3876, this would be hundredth, uh, sorry, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands. So we're gonna go to four digits. So we really need to go to a fifth digit so that we can round. Wow, okay, all right, sounds good. So cosine of Z, we're doing the same process here. We just have one additional step at the end, which I'll show you about. Uh, cosine of Z, it, we just need the adjacent side here and the hypotenuse here. Here's the opposite side, just in case you're wondering, but we don't need it. So adjacent over hypotenuse, 12 out of 15. We can divide by three to both, and we get four over five. Now I know this, I can use a calculator if I need to, but I know this is 0.8. So this is 0.8, and that's rounded already, cosine of z. Okay, let's move on to another one, cosine of c this time. Here's our reference angle right here. Okay, so then I'm looking for, again, adjacent over hypotenuse. Here's my adjacent, here's my hypotenuse. So 27 out of 45, and I need to reduce this. I can think I can reduce it by... Uh, 9. I can do it. 9 times 3 is 27. So divided by 9 is 3. And then 9 times 5 is 45. This one's going to be 0 0.6 cosine. And where's the tough ones? Apparently these are going to be tough ones. Uh, let's go over here. Maybe there's a tough one over here. So sine. Sine of Z. So here's our reference angle. Opposite this time over hypotenuse. Here it is. So we have 12 over 37. I don't think they have common factors. So we're just going to go to calculator now. Okay, so here's my calculator. Okay, type it in the calculator. 12 divided by 37. And I get, I'm going to five decimal places. Three, two, four, three, two. Okay, I think this repeats. So then we have 0 0.3. Two, four, and then three. This two isn't big enough to round up, so I just leave it the same. Here's my answer: zero point three two four three. Um, for these next ones, you're probably like, "What do I do here?" You just type in on your calculator sine of thirty-eight. So again, this is just uh, calculator time. 
So once you do this, I got 0 0.6. Make sure you're in degree mode. So you go to mode, okay? There's an option for radian or degree. Make sure you are choosing degree because this is in degrees. So we have 0 0.61566, that's five digits. We want to round up. So this becomes 0 0.6157, there's our answer. And you're gonna do the same thing for all of these. So cosine of 61, same deal. Cosine 61, make sure you're in degrees. I got 0 0.48480. Okay, so if I round to the nearest 10 thousandth, it'd be just 48 like this. There's my final answer. Can the sine of an angle ever equal two? Why or why not? So let's think about this for a second. Remember that if we have our reference angle here, and this is our opposite side, okay, let me just call this in, and this is our hypotenuse, could the opposite over the hypotenuse equal two over one, question mark? Well, can the opposite side be bigger than the hypotenuse? I think that's the question. The answer is no, it cannot. The hypotenuse has to be the biggest side. So the height, the this ratio opposite over hypotenuse must be less than one. Okay, so the sine, the sine of an angle has to be less than one because the hypotenuse has to be the longest side. Otherwise, it's it's not a triangle. Okay, so then let's go ahead and figure this one out. Here we have sine of x equals one third. Find cosine of x. This is a great problem. So first, I'm going to draw my triangle. Okay, so here's my nice triangle. I'm going to make this my reference angle and call it, do you think, you, yeah, okay, hopefully you guessed it, it's x. Now, I know the ratio, I, I know the, I don't know the actual length, but I know the ratio and that's good enough. I know the ratio is one to three for opposite over adjacent. So sine is opposite over, sorry, hypotenuse, I said adjacent. So I know it's one to three for the sine of x. Okay, so I know it's one to three. Now what I can do is I can use this inside the Pythagorean theorem to find my third side right here. So I can call my hypotenuse C and call this A and I can call this B and solve for B to find that missing side. So then I can find the adjacent side and use my trigonometric ratio for cosine to find cosine of X. So that's what I need to find here. So I'm gonna say one squared, sorry, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. I'm gonna solve for B squared. So B, or sorry, B. And then I know that's equal to, uh, sh shoot, <laughs> three squared, there you go. One plus B squared equals nine. So I'm gonna subtract one from both sides. I get B squared equals eight. I'm gonna take the square root of both sides. So I have square root of eight equals B. I'm gonna make it uh, into a decimal. Just I can reduce it if you're, uh, no, shoot, that's right. I'm working with geometry students. We can reduce this to square root of eight. In case you don't know, we can prime factorization and we can change this to the square root of four or two times two times square root of two. Take a look at one of my videos on simplifying radicals if you're unfamiliar with what I'm doing here. But essentially B becomes two radical two. So I have my B that side and that's my adjacent side. So now I can find cosine of X, why? Because I have my adjacent side now, two square root of two, and then I have my hypotenuse which is three. So I say cosine of, look at this, X, how cool is that, equals, two radical two, that's my adjacent side, over my hypotenuse, three. And that's as reduced as it can be, so I would just leave it like that, but I think it might want it rounded, which is not super cool, but I'm gonna do it anyway, times the square root of two, divided by three. I just typed this into my calculator, and I got, okay, so calculator, in case you didn't know what a calculator was, I drew a picture. We get 0 0.94280. So rounded is going to be 0 0.9428 to the nearest 10 thousands, and there we go. Hopefully you found this uh, video tutorial helpful. Uh, if you liked it, go ahead and indicate so. And if you want any other videos done on any other topics, leave a comment, and I'll be sure to get back to you. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.